My brothers and sisters, the Chrism Mass, which the bishop celebrates with his priests, is meant to display the communion of the priests with their bishop. Priests can celebrate this Mass as witnesses of the blessing of the oils which they will use in ministry, sacramental ministry, and priests can celebrate as cooperators with the bishop in the consecration of the chrism because they share in the sacred office of the bishop in building up, sanctifying, and guiding the people of God. So it's wonderful to see so many of our priests here this evening we're also joined by some of our seminarians who are serving Mass tonight from Mundelein Seminary. The college seminarians are still tied up in studies, I think until the end of tomorrow, so they couldn't be here, but we certainly want to remember them in prayer and to continue to pray for priestly vocations in our diocese because, as the priest can tell you, we need them. Now there's another celebration during Holy Week that focuses upon the priesthood, and that is the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday. That liturgy commemorates the institution of the Eucharist and the institution of the priesthood, which is so intimately connected with the Eucharist. And at that Mass, the Gospel is taken from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John. And what's interesting about John's account of the Last Supper is that John does not speak of the institution of the Eucharist. There is no recounting an institution narrative. But speaks instead of the washing of the feet of the disciples by Jesus. Why? Cardinal Raniero Cantola Mesa, the papal preacher for over 40 years, noted in one of his Lenten sermons this Lenten season that in everything concerning Easter and the Eucharist, John emphasizes the event more than the sacrament, the meaning more than the sign. The sacrifice of the body and blood of Christ, the new covenant, begins on the cross, not so much at the Last Supper. Of course, Jesus institutes the rite that must commemorate that one unrepeatable sacrifice on the cross. And he tells the apostles to do this in memory of me. Reflecting on the meaning that Jesus gives to the washing of the feet helps us understand how the Eucharist relates to the priest's life and how the priest is to imitate in his life what he celebrates at the altar. The whole meaning of Jesus' life is summarized in this gesture of foot washing. I, who am teacher and master, have washed your feet. And after Jesus is finished with washing the feet and he reclines again at table, he tells the disciples, if I have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow. It's as if Jesus were saying in the washing of the feet, as he did in instituting the Eucharist in the other Passion or uh, Last Supper accounts, do this in memory of me. The important thing for the important thing is for us priests is to know whether we are serving our brothers and sisters or whether they are serving us. 
We need to examine ourselves and be aware of what we do willingly and what we do our best to avoid. One area for reflection would be the priestly ministry to the sick and dying. I certainly am aware of my own need to be more in touch with our priests who are sick, who are dying. Uh, Monsignor Porter died last week and he will be buried uh, next week. And priests who are having difficulty in ministry. But in regard to this particular facet of priestly ministry, from the Gospels we know that the Lord himself showed great concern for the bodily and spiritual welfare of the sick and commanded his followers to do likewise. The priest, therefore, should be especially concerned for those whose health has been impaired by sickness or old age. We are to develop a zeal for this ministry, especially when it's inconvenient or when it disturbs our comfort. Why? Because our going to the sick and dying is a tangible sign of the Lord's comfort and support in the greatest time of trial. One can almost imagine at hospitals and nursing homes two lists at the nurse's station. The list of priests that can be counted upon to come and the list of priests who they do not call because they do not come. This evening, as we bless the oil of the sick, let us all aspire to be on that first list. That's an area for self-reflection for you priests and for me. But it would certainly be a impoverished view not to reflect upon the overarching scope and span of priestly ministry in this diocese of Grand Rapids. And the picture that I see for years now is one that causes me to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being happy in your vocation and showing it. Thank you for loving the church. This helps steady our people in times of questioning and anxiety. Thank you for being available and accessible. Thank you for being kind to people, especially children and for being supportive of the school if your parish has one. Thank you for preparing your homilies and being sincere and brief <laughs> at the pulpit. Thank you for being liturgically competent and being reverent as you celebrate the Eucharist. All these things give Jesus an opportunity to enter into the lives of the people that we serve. Jesus, after explaining to the apostles the meaning of the washing of the feet, said, If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. We cannot simply be satisfied with knowing and understanding these things. No, the Eucharist pushes us, impels us to service and generosity. The Eucharist is not only a mystery to be consecrated, received, and adored. It is also a mystery to be imitated. 
we have received the mandatum, the commandment of the Lord, to serve our brothers and sisters. At this renewal of commitment to priestly service, let us rejoice in having been given the grace of being able to do so. <laughs> 